When we got the call from Sarah that she had had a major fish kill, we knew that we needed to step in and help. We just wanted to get down there and take as much data as we could, as quick as we could, so that we could potentially look at what went wrong, but then also get a game plan together on next steps forward so that we could help to bring this fishery back. So some of the things that we did leading up to getting to Alabama was getting a water sample sent immediately from the slab lab to our lab in Pennsylvania. While we were waiting on getting that, we also sent off some rapid back bacteria as well because we knew we were going to see high ammonia in that water after a fish kill. So regardless of what those numbers said on the test, we wanted to get that product out as soon as possible so that once we got down there, that is something that could quickly go into action. When we got to Alabama, we immediately went out to the slab lab. That evening, we grabbed some dissolved oxygen readings around the pond. We took that at three different points around the, the water body so that we had more than one point of reference. We got up the following morning and, and did more dissolved oxygen readings. We did that right at dawn and uh, we collected at the same points that we did the previous evening. From there, we also collected water samples as well. And what we did, instead of just pulling water samples off of the surface, we actually took a deep water sampler and then we put that down to just above the sediment layer at the bottom of the pond and grabbed a sample from there and collected the water to be analyzed in, at our lab back home. Sometimes when you look at water quality from just surface samples, you can get a completely different picture of what the health of a water body is. So when we take samples from the deep, which then looks at the water right at the interface with the organic muck, it can paint a completely different picture of the health of that, that pond or lake. In this instance, we were finding high nutrient levels at the bottom that were actually higher than what we found at the surface. So that can be for a few things. A, we know that fish were dying and degrading and dropping to the bottom, but also that organic muck is full of phosphorus and ammonia that it's releasing back into the water as well. Next, we pulled samples for our cyanobacteria identification. The reason we did this was because if we can identify the specific species of cyanobacteria within a water body, that can help us gauge exactly what we need to do next. Not all species of cyanobacteria are treated the same way. Um, and if we know exactly what we're, we're dealing with, then we can have a more successful treatment plan that we put in place. So in this instance, Sarah had both benthic, which are bottom growing cyanobacteria species, and also floating surface um, and planktonic species of cyanobacteria as well. So we grabbed these samples, which we took back to our lab and ID'd. Uh, the species that we found were the microcystis, which we knew we had, and then what was rising from the bottom as well as we were finding formidium there, and we were also finding planktothrix as well. In addition to just knowing and helping with a treatment plan, the other reason that we look at specific species is so that we know what potential toxins they could produce. So not all species of cyanobacteria produce toxins, um, but some species do produce toxins, but they're not always producing. We can actually test for that and see what do those levels look like. And in this situation where we're looking at all the factors and maybe what caused the fish kill or what could have impacted these fish, we wanted to look at what those toxins looked like in the water. By knowing what type of cyanobacteria species were growing in the slab lab, we could then determine exactly which toxins we needed to test for. We sent a sample to Greenwater Laboratories in Florida, and they were able to run these samples for both anatoxin, for microcystin, and for the uh, saxitoxin as well. So. When, when we look at those things, A, in this situation, we're not looking at the toxins specifically for swimming and recreation because this, that's not the purpose of this water body. We're specifically looking at it as a way to just determine, was there any impact specific to this that caused problems with these fish that ultimately died? From these tests, we were able to determine that all three 
categories of toxins were present in this water. Not one single one of those was at an extreme value that could have necessarily killed the fish. They could have certainly impacted them in a number of ways, but we don't know how those three different types of toxins work together and could have potentially still had an impact as well. Another one of the things we wanted to collect while we were at the slab lab was a sample of the organic sediment at the bottom. The way that we do that is we use a device called an Ekman dredge and that's lowered to the bottom. And when it's triggered with the weight, it releases and it collects the soil right off of the first couple inches of the bottom. From there, we sent the sample to a lab and we are testing that sediment sample. The test is called a sediment phosphorus fractionation test. And the reason behind this is so that we can look at how much the nutrients that are getting into the water are getting there because of what is in the soil and not just what is coming in from the feed, from the fish, and from other external sources. The reason this is so important is when you're calculating how much treatment that you need to successfully remove things like phosphorus, which in turn is going to help reduce the cyanobacteria blooms and algal mass in the pond, we need to know exactly how much, how much phosphorus has the ability to release from the muck as well. So once we get those results back, we'll be able to do a true calculation of how much phosphorus is available, not just in the water column now, but how much has the potential to release from the bottom of the pond. So between all of the different tests that we've been able to pull between water samples, cyanobacteria samples, dissolved oxygen readings, uh, the sediment sampling. We're doing all of this so that we can get a full picture of exactly what's going on in this water. Our goal here in doing all of these different analysis is this. When we start over and we start doing all of these treatments to manage the slab lab, we have long-term success that is better for the fish, better for the entire ecosystem. And of course, we want to be able to grow trophy fish again without major fish kills.